Good morning, Physics 11 students. Good to have you here. We're going to be starting in on uh, some courses and uh, have an introduction and uh, take a look at some, some notes and calculations and so on for that. Uh, you will have received uh, the link to where the files are so that you can download them and uh, if you wish to work through them. And uh, you'll find the references to the, the homework questions and so on as well. We're still figuring all of this out in terms of how this will work. So your feedback that you give me uh, is, is great. And uh, I hope if you see me looking down to the sides, because I'm looking to see, make sure that I'm sort of centered in the screen as we go through this. But as you uh, take, as we go through this, and if you have some comments and suggestions, please uh, let me know if I'm going too fast, going too slow. Uh, you know, let me know, in, and in terms of talking and so on. If you have questions, again, feel free to reach out through email or through the, uh, the Jitsi uh, video uh, conferencing. And uh, hopefully, the, I will begin to see better improvements once my internet access is, is faster, and that should be happening soon. Um, so welcome uh, for being here, and uh, let's get started. Oh yeah, just before I forget, uh, the test uh, was yesterday, and uh, I've taken a look at the marks that people have, and you know how you did. And uh, if you're wanting to, to do a retest, uh, you might want to email me, and we can see about setting something like that up. Uh, yeah, we'll, we can work that out. Uh, you might want to spend some time, and we can you know set, perhaps set if you ha are having some questions, uh, we can perhaps uh, spend some time and take a look at the, the questions you're having just to make sure that you're successful doing this. All right, so I'm going to just change things over and uh, there we go. And there I appear, so excellent. So here we are, Physics 11 Forces, and this is lesson number one. So a force. A force is really simply put as a push or a pull. Now, if I was standing in the classroom, I'd get one of you to stand up. Probably Ty. Come on, Ty, stand up. Come over here, Ty. I'm going to push Ty or I'm going to pull Ty. I'm going to apply the force. Or if we want to use Star Wars, I might apply the force, Luke, uh, and see how things go that way. But a force is a push or a pull. We push something away with a force, or we pull something towards us with a force. Forces are pulling you down towards the earth, and the chair that you're sitting in is providing a force that's pushing you up so you don't fall into the earth. So forces are really everywhere, but simply if you think of them as a push or a pull, you're doing really well. Now, the interesting thing is, is that we think of there being perhaps lots of forces out in the world. There's really only four basic forces. First of all, there's gravity, which is the force that happens between masses, between, uh, yeah, between masses, between objects that have mass, and they look to be gravity. We have the electric force. And sometimes we put magnetic into here because mag magnetism is really just an expression of the electric force that you've got. The electric force is like your positives and your negatives and how they're attracted to each other or repelling each other. And the magnetic force comes from when you have moving electric charges. So these things are really tied together. Like, you know, what holds... Uh, you know, electrons onto an atom comes down to the electric force. What causes tape to be sticky really comes down to the electric force. Strange, interesting things that way. We then have the strong nuclear force and the weak nuclear force. Yep, that's it. Gravity, electric Electric, electromagnetic force, strong nuclear force, and weak nuclear force. Now, strong nuclear force, this is only seen inside the nucleus of an atom. 
and it's what keeps the nucleus together. If you think about it, a nucleus is made up of all these protons and some neutrons in there as well. Well, protons, they're constantly repelling. They have that electric force, and that force would be pushing them apart. They would be wanting to be flying apart. So there's this strong nuclear force that actually holds them and keeps them all together. And the interesting thing is it's so strong, much stronger than gravity and so on, but the distance that it acts over is really, really tiny in terms of just the nucleus that's there. The weak nuclear force is a force that really deals with the decay of, well, radioactive decay and so on. It helps us to understand and explain that. And that's the weak nuclear force. Now, you really don't have to know much about the strong nuclear force and weak nuclear force. We're not going to do any calculations on those things. Um, really, we're going to be spending some time on gravity. That's a, a good place to start. And uh, we'll go from there. But a force is a vector, which means that it has a magnitude and a direction. And so everything that we've learned about vectors in the last unit still apply with forces. Vectors are a very useful thing to under, use to understand the world around us, whether it's velocities and accelerations, whether it's forces, we're going to use vectors. Now, the unit of the force, well, it was named after this guy. Uh, this guy is Isaac Newton. And uh, he lived back in the, the 1600s. He, I think he was born in like 1643. I was just reading a little bit about him and he died in like 1725. So pretty, uh, pretty old. So the force uh, is the Newton and the symbol is a capital N. I just wanted to read you this little, one little excerpt about Newton because it sort of applies to you being at home and me being in my basement filming this. Um, just after Isaac Newton graduated from Cambridge University in 1665, um, England was struck by the plague. Tens of thousands of people died. And you know what they did? They closed down the schools. The schools were closed down and the pupils were sent home. For two years they stayed home with sickness and death all around. Newton, he just continued working. Uh, developing many fundamental laws of physics and uh, mathematical theorems, including calculus. And calculus. In uh, 1669, the professor of mathematics at Cambridge University actually gave up his position so that Newton, uh, to Newton, to enable him to devote more of his time to his theories and so on that he was developing. Newton never married, carried, cared little about clothes or food, and this is the interesting part, the funny part, he was known only uh, to laugh once, once, and that was at a friend who complained he did not see the value in geometry. I think Newton was a pretty big geek, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, but uh, you know, a lot of the work that he did was very foundational to a lot of our understanding, and so he is honored really by having the unit of force named after him. And that's it's not that he discovered forces, it's that they named the unit uh, for him. So now we want to talk really a bit about gravity. And uh, gravity is all around us. You know, so if we think of the Earth, uh, my Earth, well, we have gravity pulling down here and gravity coming down this way, and gravity up this way, and gravity up this way. So even in Australia, they don't have to walk on their hands, they walk on their feet, because gravity is pulling them in towards the center of the Earth. Now, for where we live, if we have something at the top of our head, or it's at our feet, we really feel that the force of gravity is the same. It's not like we go climbing up a mountain and suddenly the force of gravity is less or, you know, different things like this. We feel that gravity is pretty uniform. Gravity, ex we experience gravity as being uniform. So gravity 
team's uniform. There's not a difference in that. So this brings us to what we call the gravitational field strength. And the gravitational field strength, in some ways, it's a measure of the strength of what we live in. <laughs> The gravitational field strength is the strength of the gravitational field. There's a circular argument for you. Um, but it's really related to the acceleration uh, due to gravity. And so on Earth, what's the acceleration due to gravity? Well, that acceleration we said is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared downward. Well, that is how we define the gravitational field strength. The symbol that we use for the gravitational field strength is little g. Yo, yo, little g. It's little g, and it has a value of 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Now, the interesting thing is that we could actually go through and show, or you might be able to show it to yourself, but newtons per kilogram is the same thing as meters per second squared. And so that this value of 9.8 meters per second is really what gives us the value for the gravitational field strength. These values are the same because they are the same. This is how the gravitational field strength is really defined. It's defined as the acceleration due to gravity. So we have a gravitational field strength. And so we have this formula that allows us to calculate the, uh, the gravitational field strength or the force of gravity. This not, uh, just messed up. Try this again. This is not gravity. It's the gravitational field strength. And so be really careful about calling it gravity. I find students sometimes do, and it's just not the right thing. So we have F, which is the force of gravity, and it's measured in newtons. We have M, which is the mass of an object measured in kilogram. And then we have G, which is our gravitational field strength, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram or you can say meters per second squared. Either of those units are perfectly fine. I'm not gonna be picky one way or the other which unit you might use for that, but just recognize the, the same thing. So what we wanna do is we, this is one of the equations that you're gonna be responsible for. It's gonna be on your data sheet. So let's just make use of it. So here's, uh, we've got three little questions to do. What is the force of gravity on a 4.5 kilogram block? All right. So we're being asked to find the force of gravity. What do we know? Well, we know M is equal to 4.5 kilograms. M is the mass. Kilograms is the unit of mass. We got 4.5 kilograms. Oh, well, then we have, what about our G? Well, that's 9.8 newtons per kilogram. It's not in the question. It's a constant constant that you're needing to know. All right. So we would set this up, F is equal to mg. We're gonna substitute in what we know. F is what we're looking for, let's throw a vector sign onto there. Our mass being 4.5 kilograms. And then we're going to multiply this by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And you can see then that kilograms cancel out with kilograms and then we're gonna be left with newtons. <coughs> Excuse me. So pulling out your Casio FX260 Solar or your Casio FX260 Solar 2, Tim, uh, we're going to take our 4.5, multiply that by our 9.8, and we get 44.1. So the force of gravity is equal to 44.1 newtons. That's the force of gravity on a 4.5 kilogram block. Now, if you're doing this in your head or just wanting to check, Recognize that 9.8 is approximately 10. So 4.5 times 10 would be 45. So we know that we're close. Again, being able to check the value uh, to know whether the value makes sense or not is always a good thing. 
All right, so here's the next part. What is the mass of an object with a force of gravity of 167 newtons acting on it? And what I didn't put in this, but this is on Earth's surface. So let's just say on Earth. All right, again, we summarize the information. Uh, we're mass, what is the mass? That's what we're looking for. We have a force that's equal to 167 newtons. Oh yeah, right, then we have G, which is our <laughs> newtons per kilogram, uh, 9.8 newtons per kilogram. All right, so F is equal to mg, substitute in what we know, 167 newtons. I'll just erase that, and I'll just erase this over here too. So, because <laughs> I can. Our force is 167 newtons is equal to m, and then our g, which is our 9.8 newtons per kilogram. m then works out to be, we'll do 167, 167 divided by our 9.8, and that's equal to 17.0 kilograms. There's the mass of the object, calculating the mass as we go through. Well, here's a different question, because again, if we, if we consider F is equal to mg, what sort of questions can we ask? Well, we can ask questions about the force. We can ask questions about the mass, given the force. We can also ask questions about g, because the interesting thing is, is that the force of gravity that we would feel at different places in the universe, not on Earth, but within the universe, it's going to change. So here we have, what is the gravitational field strength? So we're looking for little g on the moon. And now we've gone to a different place in the universe, and the force of gravity is going to be less. All right, so what are we told? Well, we have 250 kilograms. 250 kilograms, oh, that's a mass, because it's kilograms, so 250. And then we have this 408. Newtons, 408. Newtons is a, a uh, gravitational force. That's my force. Excellent. And then we're saying, well, what is the gravitational field strength? So what is G? Now let's just go on the moon. And that's what we're looking to find. All right. So we're going to set this up. F is equal to mg. Our force is 408 newtons. Our mass is 250. 50 kilograms, and we're looking for G. So G will be equal to our 408 divided by our 250. 408 divided by 250 is equal to 1.6 newtons per kilogram. And this is newtons on top, and this is kilograms on the bottom, and so that's where these units come from. So there we go. Easy piece of lemon squeezy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Even on video, it, it doesn't really get any better. So here we're pretty much coming down to the last thing for today. And this is a discussion of mass versus weight. In our day and age, we use these terms pretty interchangeably. But they have really different concepts. Mass, this is always really going to be measured in terms of kilograms or grams. Weight, well, weight represents the force of gravity acting on a mass. And so its units would be newtons if we're talking in the metric system. If we we're talking in English system, this would be pounds. Anyway, so we have kilograms and we have newtons. Mass does not vary. It doesn't change. So, you know, if you were here on Earth and you went to the moon, there you are in a space ship, or it's a space suit, spaceship. There you are in a space suit. Well, your mass has not changed. Same mass. Now, 
the amount of you hasn't changed. Mass is a measure of the quantity of matter. And that hasn't changed. But what has changed is the weight. So the weight depends, there's an M in there, depends upon where you are. Where are you in the universe? Where are you? What planet are you on? What moon are you on? That's going to depend on the weight. Or that's what the weight is depending on. Um, just had a quick... I don't want to go on to that. Let's do this. Just had a quick uh, thing. It was a number of years ago. It must be almost five or six years ago. The European Space Agency, uh, the ESA, they were sending a space probe and they were sending it to a comet. Not an asteroid, not a planet, not a moon, but to a comet that was rushing in towards the Earth. And so the space probe went in its orbital trajectory around the sun and, and moon, Earth and so on and went out to this comet. And it went into orbit around the comet. Now, things orbit because of gravity. But a comet is, has such really a low mass. I mean, it's fairly big. It wasn't just like a snowball in your hand or anything like that. But still, the gravity that it had was extremely, extremely small. And so they were orbiting around it. And then they dropped a probe onto the surface. And the interesting thing is that they said the probe was about the size of a dish or a clothes washer, a washing machine. And I just want to draw. <laughs> oh, look at this, my washing machine. And they dropped this washing I always think of a washing machine being dropped onto this comet. They dropped it onto the comet, and they lost it. And this is the, the interesting thing. When it, the, the gravity was so weak that there was a gravitational pull. And we're going to talk about that uh, probably next time. But the gravitational pull was so weak that this washing machine came down, hit the surface, and then bounced. And it bounced way over here, and then bounced again, and so on, before it finally came to a rest. And they had special little rocket you know, studs that were supposed to you know, attach it to the surface of the comet, and so on. And it just didn't work. And they lost it, and they were communicating with it, but it was in the shade, and it just lost power, and eventually stopped working. Very, very disappointing. But anyways, gravity is really important. And you go, depending on where you are in the universe, gravity is pretty small. And on, let's just say, pretty small gravity. The moon is much smaller than what the Earth is. And so the gravitational force on the moon is about one-sixth. You go to, say, Jupiter. If you could land on Jupiter... You'd be crushed. Anyway, these little side stories, to me, they keep me interested. Hopefully, they keep you interested as well. All right. Uh, so you have the review packages. Hopefully, you have those with you at home. So review 5.10, questions 1 to 4. If you can take a look at uh, work on those questions. And um, if you have questions, if you're uh, confused by any of this, please drop me a note, stop by the, the Jitsi room, and let's get things figured out. All right. Thanks very much, and signing off. Oh, here we go. Now we're going to say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>